Hello and welcome to our program, Where God Weeps, a program where we speak about the situation of the suffering church around the world. Today we're going to be speaking about Russia, more specifically the story of Catholics in Russia. Catholics number only about 700,000, a minority among the greater majority Orthodox tradition. But nonetheless, the Catholic presence is felt through its care as well as spiritual prayers and support to the community. To tell us more about the lives of Catholics in Russia, it's my great privilege to welcome Sister Radosti. Sister Radosti is a member of the Argentinian Institute of Our Lord and of the Virgin of Matara. Sister Radosti, thank you for being with us here today in our program. Thank you very much for your invitation. Sister Radosti, you are a convert. You were, up until quite late in your life, actually an atheist, or rather a non-believer. Yes. Can you tell yes. us, just in two words, about the story of your conversion? Mm -hmm. When I was little, and in the first year in, in, the, my, uh, in the school, because of the big persecution of the all kinds of the faith in my country, I didn't hear nothing about God. And uh, really, if, if I, uh, if I uh, see the church, it's, uh, it was like nothing for me. I don't understand what does it mean, uh, nothing about it. I didn't thought about, uh, I didn't think about the God. But uh, when our country changed the regime... In 1991 or yes, 1991? Yes, 1991. I began to think about the God. Uh, and in the... Uh, in the situation, the, um, the, then the people uh, don't have a, f a faith, they don't have the uh, hope. That means they don't have the joy. <laughs> and I was thinking much about this, and uh, when I can convert, I understand, or I, during the catechism, when I knew about the Christ, um, who been winner all my life is change uh, and I, I found the hope, I found the, the joy. <laughs> Your parents were um, atheists, they were non-believers. This must have been a bit difficult to see their daughter suddenly becoming interested in faith and interested in God. Yes, it was, really it was, and um, they are not atheists, I mean, they, they didn't know about, nothing about God, and really it was very strange for them to see me in, in this new way. <laughs> Your father was a military man. Yes, my father was a military man, and uh, like all military, military men, and this uh, man, in this time, uh, he received a very strong atheistic uh, formation, education, but uh, they are very good parents. That's why they leave leave me in my own choice because I I I, I was 19 years old when I can convert, and uh, they always uh, were near uh, um, by me. And when I saw that our church, the real church, we didn't uh, we do nothing. Um, nothing strange. O on the contrary, we do the good things. Uh, they, they were near. They started to accept. accept. Hmm? And now your father and your parents, they, they believe that there is um, a God? Or? My mother is very open to faith. She, um, she has a deep uh, respect to the church, to the faith, to the Catholic Church. And my father became to doubt. To doubt, yes. Doubt. Once he said to me, I don't know if if really somebody is. <laughs> if there is a God or not. If yes. So he started to doubt his atheistic education. Yes. Uh, sister, you were living as an atheist in an atheistic family. Um, 
when was it that you first had a sense of the presence of God and, and what was it the spark that said, I want to become a nun, I want to become a religious? When I was uh, seven years old, our teacher once, uh, she came to the classroom and she uh, suddenly she, she said uh, to us, um, children, uh, listen to me. You know, uh, when you hear to speak about some God, almighty God, uh, you have to be um, sure that this um, might or the ignorance people, any God exists. There is no God. It was the first time I uh, heard about, the, I, I heard the name of God. Hmm? But after that, I, I didn't interest it. At, um, but when I was a teenager, I, asked, I be, became to ask many questions about the injustice, life, happiness, and I saw that I can't find it and the people are not happy. Something wrong in my, my society. And uh, I understand that God exists. Um, because of uh, because uh, because of the good examples of the for example in my family my mom or um, the ac acts acts of charity 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 uh, of different people but we can't explain the, these things uh, um, and after that I I saw the the nature the harmony the beauty. And I understand it's... There must be something. And, uh, but really, I, I, I began to, to look for somebody who can explain me this, but there is no nobody. Uh, and uh, that's why it's so important to be missionary, <laughs> to go to these places. Yes, to, <laughs> to, to catch to these young people who are searching. Yes, to speak because they're waiting, really. They're, they're waiting, waiting for, for the Word always. of God. Yes. And, and why a Catholic nun? Why did you decide um, in, a, in a majority Orthodox society to become Catholic? Because uh, the Catholic Church in this time didn't have a catechism. And I saw it was like many things of rights, but not the, the real faith. That's why when I came to the Catholic Church the first, um, the first time, it was when our sister, uh, the missioner, uh, I came to this little chapel, Catholic chapel in the city, and it was a first meeting for the people, for the older people who is going to receive baptism in future. And they explain the first commandment, uh, who is God, who we are, and what we have to do for God. It was so clear, simple. Uh, I thought, this is a true, <laughs> I want to be here. <laughs> And in this way, I became Catholic in very, in very small, in, in the very short time, I uh, discovered my vocation. And it was so strong that I, I was very sure God wants uh, to be, uh, to be none, to, from me to be none. And, um, but I have to finish my university before. It was the only condition that asked my for poor my parents, <laughs> and after that I entered in our congregation. Sister, you come from the region of Kazan, and of course in Kazan is the very, very famous icon, Our Lady of Kazan, yes. which is so important to Russia. Can you tell us just in two words the story of uh, the icon of Kazan and why it's so important for Russia? The icon of Kazan was found um, in the miraculous way. And uh, during the revolution, it was disappeared, and nobody knows in what way. After many years, one uh, man found it, and the people of one uh, Catholic movement uh, became to move to 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 ask the money to buy buy um, this icon. So, in fact, if I understand correctly, just it was smuggled outside outside of Russia. Somehow, miraculously, it came outside of Russia during 
this Judica. whole revolution, this whole uh, yes. in 1917, the yes. Bolshevik Revolution. Yes. It was smuggled outside and it found its way to America, yes. into a private collection. Yes. And then a Catholic movement, they were able to... To, to receive it. And with Cardinal Makarlik, he moved uh, much uh, to, um, uh, to receive this icon. And he brought it to Holy Father um, John Paul II the second, and um, a Holy Father, when he received this icon, uh, he put it in his private chapel, yes. and he said, I'm waiting for the moment when I can give this icon to the, to the people of Russia, when uh, it will be possible. And it became possible. Yes. And now the icon is back in Russia. Yes, um, thanks to God, uh, it was a very... Uh, it was a wonderful um, a gift. Action, or a, a gift, yes. The icon, uh, first of all, was one prayer here in the um, in Vatican. After that, he, it was um, brought to Moscow, and uh, in one year, uh, the Patriarch of uh, Russia or the uh, Orthodox Church uh, gave it to uh, to Kazan. In Kazan, the government. Of this, uh, of my um, city, uh, they uh, do everything to prepare the um, uh, the place for this icon. First of all, they uh, built again, or, uh, renew, restore, uh, restore the church uh, that it was original, originally, and uh, the monastery, uh, which was built in the place. Uh, there they found this icon, uh, and now the um, uh, religio religious uh, from this um, uh, Orthodox religious from this monastery, uh, they put it in the very, uh, very good place, open for the for the visits. And many and people, they, many people come. Many people come from different places and from. Uh, United States, for example, I receive, we, like with the Catholic Church in Kazan, we receive these pilgrims and uh, in, the, in, the, um, uh, in the tour of, of peregrination, uh, they visit always the Virgin of Kazan from Germany to in, in, from different uh, from places. Yes, not from, only from Russia. Now, no. Kazan was a particular place, place uh, also like many places in Russia, because um, during the communist period, of course, the faith, um, both mm -hmm. the Orthodox and the Catholic Church, were persecuted. Yes. And the people had to live their faith in, in hiding. Mm -hmm. um, in Kazan, if I understand correctly, there was one Catholic who was living. Yes. Uh, our fathers, when they came to Kazan, Kazan, mm -hmm. um, 1994, uh, they knew only one Catholic person. Uh, um, obviously, this person doesn't practice the faith. I mean, he, well, he, there is no any church, any church there. And uh, in this way, it's be begin, began uh, our community in Kazan. After that, our sisters uh, came to Kazan in 1996. Uh, and this time it was very hard yet in Russia because it was um, the first years after the um, perestroika, perestroika and the changes, changes yes. uh, in, uh, in my country. And um, thanks to the missionary work of our missioners, uh, our, um, our parish was uh, growing up step by step, little by little. And now there's a, now there's a flourishing Catholic community in Kazan. In Kazan, yes, and, and not only community. We have a very beautiful uh, church, Catholic church, in the center of the city because uh, in the first time it, we don't have anything, not, not any church, any chapel. After that, um, our missionaries uh, found our Catholic chapel, historical Catholic chapel, and uh, they be we began to celebrate, uh, to celebrate the Masses there, in this chapel, for some years. Uh, and uh, after that, in 2008, um, Cardinal Sodano, the Cardinal Sodano, he consecrated a new Catholic uh, church in Kazan. In Kazan, 
Yeah. It's extraordinary because during the time of communism, the Catholic Church, in in uh, in a terrible way, was deeply persecuted. Yes. How did the people keep the faith alive? How did they continue to live their faith in in such a in such a terrible persecution where they were taken to prison, they were, were imprisoned mm -hmm. if they were found to be believing. And mm -hmm. how did the people keep their faith in such a difficult time? Uh, the, these people, after that, our uh, the grandmother saw other people. When he, they uh, told us the stories of the persecution and of the um, hiding faith <laughs> uh, in the places, uh, First of all, they saw it like uh, the cross of Jesus Christ because, first of all, all this persecution, uh, this is a um, suffering of Christ on the cross. And th they saw it like to be united in the Holy Cross of Christ. And the second very important thing for us is um, forgiving. They don't in the very strong suffering, um, unjusting of injustice, injustice of injustice, and all the situation, the hard situation, they never uh, hate. They never hate. They always for forgive of the name of God, and uh, that's why they have um, the hope, the big hope of eternal life and the big hope of the future church in this place. Sister, you are a missionary in your own country. Yes. <laughs> you became a member of the uh, institute, the an Argentinian institute, mm -hmm. and you were sent from Kazan now to Khabarovs, which is in the far, far east. How would you describe the, I mean, you're saying it's near the border of China, it's in Siberia, is it it's, every, all the imaginations that we have of Siberia is terribly cold and, and flat and a lot of trees. <laughs> I don't know if this uh, is, is actually close to the reality, um, but what is life like living really on the margins of Russian society and the, you know, close, as you say, to the Chinese border? Mm -hmm. It's, um, the life there, it's a little, it's, it's um, more difficult than in, the, uh, than in the central part of Russia. Yes, it's, it's, it is, <laughs> but... Um, Physi other... Physically, or is it just also from the society? For, is there greater alcohol the so great alcoholism? From the society, from the... because um, all the, uh, the changing reach these places in some years after. <laughs> oh, I see. So there was a delay between, De yes. between Western Russia and... Yes, when I came from Kazan to Khabarovsk, I feel like uh, I come back to several, several years, years before. before, like I was in Kazan. But uh, the people, they are, because of the suffering, they are waiting for the help, uh, first of all, for the spiritual help. Are they open to, are they yes. open to God? Yes, maybe they can have some... Resistance. Or Not so resistance, but like a def defense. A defense, yes. Because they um, uh, they want to know the real God. I mean, they want to know the true. That's why they ask many questions, deep questions, and really we have to be very, really prepared to answer it. But it's a very beautiful work. And you have to, I suppose, in your life you have to be a symbol, but to the very roots, so that they know that you are of authentic course. in your in your who yes. you are. Yes, yes, of course. Like we are missionaries in Russia, we have to be very. Um, uh, we have to know that we are face of the church. First of all, of the Catholic, Apostolic Church, <laughs> Universal <laughs> Church. Sister, I want to also um, touch upon uh, Our Lady of Fatima. Mm -hmm. Our Lady of Fatima had a special message for Russia. Yes. Uh, she called Russia a jewel in her crown. Mm -hmm. Why? What is the particular message that Our Lady of Fatima has for Russia? And what hope um, does this give also for your work? But also, not only, I suppose, the re-evangelization or the mm -hmm. evangelization of Russia, but also yes. of Europe. 
first of all, it was very, um, it's, it's, it's a very strong fact that uh, she appeared and she gave us this message in the same year the, um, the, the revolution. In 1917. 1970. The fact is, or the story shows us, showed us that um, actually this, uh, the communism was spreading, spreading in, the, uh, in other countries and the communism brought this much suffering for all the people and the, for all the nationalities. And um, it was very, very many, many people, really many people were died during this persecution. Uh, not only religious, but uh, persecution, persecution, uh, persecution yeah. for the um, um, people of a high culture, for example. The intellectuals. Intellectual people, yes. And um, that's why she asked to pray that this evil uh, don't grow more. Mm. And uh, the, the history showed us it, it was really um, very hard uh, suffering for all these places and um, Holy Mary uh, she gave us the hope too because really me like Russian I saw that the communism destruct, destroyed not only my country my culture, my history, my faith. Uh, he stole, yes? Yes, stole. Stole the salvation of the people. He stole the God. But Virgin said us that Russia will give many missionaries for the world. And now our church in Russia, Catholic Church, is very small. And it's hard for our mission, missionaries to work there. And only not, uh, one of the um, big help for us is to remember and to believe in this message that this silent, silent walk of the missionaries um, will have the fruits. <laughs> I suppose your work now is first the mission inside of Russia, so yes. that later Russia Russian, yes, we'll, will be we'll a give... missionary country for the world. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, we, we understand it like uh, Russia will convert, will, uh, their people will receive a strong faith and uh, will uh, we'll give this faith to another people. <laughs> what about secularism? In the West we have seen a very difficult, mm -hmm. um, we are living a very difficult period with a very aggressive secularism mm -hmm. which is affecting all parts of society. Yes. Um, um, the Russian Orthodox Church and the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. or rather the Russian Orthodox Church has been calling to work with the Catholic Church mm -hmm. to defend Christian Our values. Faith, yes. How do you see secularism impacting in Russia? Is it affecting the young people? And, and what about this call of the Russian Orthodox Church to mm -hmm. fight together with the Catholic Church to defend the Christian values mm -hmm. in Russia and in Europe? Yes. Uh, yes, of course, the secu secularism is in Russia too because all the borders are open <laughs> and we receive not only faith from in other countries but... All the other things that come uh, with yes, it. Yes, yes. It's not helps to our missionaries' work and for all the society and for the Orthodox Church too because we see that the, with the secularism um, the people don't want to, to ask the main questions about the sins of the life, about the reality of God or the reality of the, our spiritual uh, soul and the future life. That's why really we have to um, work together to renew or, or to, to give the real, the, um, the truth about of the human being and the truth of the faith. Sister, what can we do? You are in you are in Khabarovsk, in the in the very uh, east of east of the country. Uh, I think 
I don't know how many eight hours flying time yes. probably between <laughs> Moscow and, and, and where you are. Mm -hmm. Even though you're so far away, what can we do to help? To help, uh, first of all, uh, please be missionaries from your houses. <laughs> how do we how do we be missionaries from our house? By, uh, through our prayers. Prayers and sacrifice for the missionaries in the difficult places, uh, in the difficult places for places for the church, and for the missionaries, for the missions, and uh, we need the missionaries. I mean, the young people. Please don't be afraid to ask if you have vocation or what kind of vocation you have, and don't be afraid to answer to God because it's a it's a this is a very big and very dignous with great dignity with great dignity mission which God offers us in his salvation plan <laughs> sister thank you very much for having been with us today in our program thank you very much and thank you ladies and gentlemen for having been with us today on our program where god weeps and if you'd like to know more about the work of Sister Radotsny in Russia, or perhaps how you might be able to help through your prayers or your concrete action, I would encourage you to look at the contact information at the end of this program. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.